Mr Speaker, the issue is very serious for people around the country whose homes are being flooded. They need help and support. They don't need trite answers like that from their Prime Minister. Time and again, communities and lives are being put at risk and the government simply refuses to acknowledge the scale of the problem. Does he agree with his honourable friend, the member for Shipley, who said the government has done precious little to stop the floods happening again? Uh, Mr Speaker, let, let, me re- let me repeat for the benefit of the right honourable gentleman that this government has a fantastic record of investing in flood defences and will continue to do so. And the reason we can do so, the reason we've been able to commit £2.6 billion to flood defences and we're able to pledge another £4 billion, Mr Speaker, is because this government is running a strong and successful and robust economy which he would ruin. The Prime Minister was keen to pose for cameras when there's a crisis on during the election, but he often goes AWOL. He was late to respond to the London riots because he was on holiday. He was on a private island when the Iranian general was assassinated. And last week he was with his head in his sand, the sands in a mansion in Kent. The MP for Calder Valley, another of his colleagues, said it's not good enough. How can the country trust a Prime Minister, a part-time Prime Minister? Last night, last night, schmoozing Tory party donors at a very expensive black tie ball instead of getting out there and supporting the people who are suffering because of the floods. This government needs to step up to the plate and invest in defences and ensure there is real insurance for people whose homes are being ruined by these floods as we speak. Mr Speaker, the, the, the honourable, right honourable gentleman asked what this government has been doing in the last few days. Well, let me tell you, not only have we been investing massively in flood defences and compensating those who suffered from flooding, but we've been stopping the early release of terrorists. We've restored the nurses' bursary. We're beginning work on 40 new hospitals. We're recruiting 20,000 more police officers. And we can do that, Mr Speaker, because we have a strong and dynamic, dynamic economy with employment at record highs, unemployment down to the lowest levels since the early assemblies, wages going up, home ownership up. And what are they doing, Mr Speaker? They're still deciding. They're still, listen, listen to them jabbering away, Mr Speaker. <laughs> jabbering away. I think we'll have a little bit more silence on the second right, right. Prime Minister. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> quite, quite, quite right, Mr Speaker. Jabbering away because they still can't decide whether or not they want to be in the European Union. And the hottest topic of debate in the Labour Party is what job should the right honourable gentleman have in the shadow cabinet after the leadership election? Mr Speaker, they are, they are engaging themselves in narcissistic debate about the Labour Party. We are getting on. We are getting on in delivering on the people's priorities. Yeah.